Tonight, we have the privilege of hearing Divrei Chizik from a rare individual. Rabbi David Nakash is a person who has a unique combination of tremendous Avas HaToyra together with a burning Avas Yisrael. It is this combination that fuels his Harbatas HaToyra and his ability to spread Kenyan HaToyra throughout Klal Yisrael. We ask Rabbi Nakash to give us the Chizik. Years ago, I went to visit Rabbi Elia Weintraub. He was a gadol in Bnei Brak, and he gave us a beautiful mashal. He, he told us there was a book that came out in America of a person that snuck into the nuclear plant of America. Top secret, classified, you need crazy clearance. And somehow he got in, he got into the big room with buttons all over the place, danger, warning, don't press, a million warnings all over the place, sirens. So what could be the big deal about this room? All these buttons, all these gadgets. Somehow he snuck in, he gets into the room. He says, well, let me give it a try. He presses this button, that button, this button. What's the big deal? Nothing's happening. He's looking around. Nothing's going on. Pressing another button, another button, another button, another button. And he's thinking that, you know, based on all the signs and also the security, this is going to be bombs and crazy things and nothing's happening in the room. He says, that's oh, just a button. It's just everyone's overreacting. It's just a button. But then when he walks outside, he sees chaos. He sees wars, nuclear rockets, bombs. He didn't realize the buttons that he pressed shattered the whole world. He didn't realize that what he thought was just a button spiraled into crazy, crazy wars all over the place. Rockets flying, different countries, people screaming, sirens. And Robert Weintraub said, Sometimes we think it's just a button. Sometimes we think we're doing something small. We're doing something little. And we don't realize the effect that it has. And that's what learning is. Owning a masechta, learning, owning, being called a masechta, we think, OK, it's a good thing. It's a nice thing. We have no idea what an effect it is. We have no idea what an effect it has. Yes, Talmud Torah is a mitzvah. Yes, it's a mitzvah to learn. But Torah is much more than a mitzvah. It's a builder, it's a changer, it's a life changer, it's a game changer. A person could do mitzvahs, a person could wear tefillin and tzitzis all day long, every day, from the day he was born to the day he dies, and he could still be the same guy from the beginning to the end. Not possible with Torah, not possible. A person cannot learn in a real way, unaffected. A person cannot learn in a real way, unchanged. Rav Gifter, Rav Gifter on his wall when he was 18 years old, when he was your age. He had Gedolim all over the wall. Gadol, 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 all over the wall. Picture frame of Gedolim and an empty picture frame. Why not you? 18-year-old Bachar, why not you? Why can't you? Why not you? Why are you going to be on that wall? Because he knew the power of Torah could take a young boy and make him into a giant. That's the power that Torah has. It's not just a mitzvah. Nefesh says it's not just a mitzvah. But we don't need a gifter to show us that. We don't need a gifter and all the chazals that show us the Koch HaTorah. We don't need that. We see, it, we see it in front of our face. We see the before and after. You go on a trade, you see before and after pictures. What does it try to show us? You see a fat guy before picture. And all of a sudden, after, skinny. What does it try to do? Oh, he went on a diet. The before and after, we, we can see a bachar before, and we can see him a year later after, and we don't even need to uh, be explained what happened. We know he went into Torah, he delved into it, he owned it. And that made that change. The power the Torah has, unlike anything else of our 613, anything else in our tayag, it's not a regular, it's not, yeah, of course it's a mitzvah. But it's much, much bigger. It's much, much more powerful. What gives it the power? We see the power. We see it all over. What gives the Torah that power? What is it? What makes it? What makes it that a Bacha could, could hate learning? And when he finally gets it, he changes. 
We see Bachram that once they get it, they become smarter, they become clearer, they become more sensitive, they become leaders. It changes their whole essence. The Torah has that power. Why? Why does the Torah have that power? Derek Hashem explains we have to take, we have to look at the big picture. Our goal in life, we need to get close to Hashem. Who is Hashem? The only ruler of the world, the only creator of the world. Every single thing in this world is from Him. Every single, from the smallest blade of grass, every fish, every bird, every NFL team, whether they win or lose, every stock market that goes up or down, it's all Him. Every traffic jam, every war, every peace treaty, every thought, it's all Him. And that's in this world. What about up? What about the universe? Anyone ever think about the universe? It's pachad. The sun. The sun that the scientists say, one little distance closer to Earth will burn us. One little distance further from us will freeze us. The perfect place. And that sun could hold one million Earths. That one sun, our sun, could hold one million Earths. And there are billions and billions of suns. You know how gigantic this world is? You know how gigantic Hashem is? You know how powerful that is? So a person will think, wow, it's too big. Billions of suns, billions of stars, every single thing in this world is Hashem. It's impossible to get close to Him. It's impossible. And Hashem says, no, honey. My son, no. I am going to give you the greatest gift of the universe. I am going to put myself, my perfection, my power in a Torah. And I'm going to let you attach yourself to that Torah. And when you attach yourself to that Torah, the more you attach yourself to my per power, the more powerful you will be. And the more you attach yourself to my perfection, the more perfect you will become. Yes, I'm enormous. I'm, it's, it's infinite. It's unfathomable. It's unspeakable. But I gave you a way. I gave you a way that you could still come close to Yes, little me. Little me could come close to this giant power. And that's why when we learn, we feel that power. That power changes us. Because that power is Hashem's way of talking to us. That power is Hashem's way of getting close to us. And that's the power. We have to know we have so much kochas in us. We have so much, we have potential. We have so much strength. Our job now is to bring it out. We see there's a muscle. We have to work hard. We have to work hard to bring it out. But there's a way, once we attach ourselves to the Torah, the, the, all the power comes out. There's a muscle with a camel, a baby camel talking to a mommy camel. So the baby camel is looking around all the animals. He says, why am I so different than all the other animals? I have these legs, these straight, thin, thick legs. So the baby goes to the mom, mom, why, am I, why are my legs different than all the other animals? So the mom says, oh, we're so lucky. We could travel hundreds of miles in the desert at a time. We have strong, stick legs. We are so lucky. No other animal can do that with our legs. Wow. But my, one more question. Why do we have these big bumps on our back? Why? So I said, oh, hon, we're so lucky. Because we could travel hundreds of miles in the desert. All this, you know, that big hump, it keeps all the nutrients, all the food in it. So we could travel hundreds of miles in the desert without eating. We could go and go and go. Other animals have to stop. They have to rest. We could go on and on because our nutrients is in our back on this big hump. Wow, we're so lucky. And one more question. Why do we have these big eyelashes? I don't see any other animals have that. Oh, we are so lucky because we could travel hundreds of miles in the desert and the dust doesn't come into our eyes and the sand doesn't come into our eyes. We are the luckiest animal. No other animal could be it. So the baby goes, one more question, Mom. What good is all that if we're stuck in the zoo? What good is that? All the powers, all the potential, all the talents, all the colors, if we're stuck. The same with us. We have so much in us. You have no idea how much we could be, how far we could grow. Yet, we need to unlock our cage. Where, how is that going to happen? What's going to unlock our cage? Chazara, 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 only attaching yourself to the Torah in a real way, in a way that you enjoy, in the way that you love, in the way that's capable. We can't settle. We can't settle to just be okay when you're made to be great. You cannot settle. It's like, a, you know, in any other area, you would think, let's say you have a great basketball player, best basketball player in the NBA, number 23, yeah? 
Let's say it's all of a sudden he's playing in the park. Playing in the park at the younger age, playing in the park, all of a sudden, all the crowds go around the fence. Everyone's giving him the class when he gets the, when he gets the shot. Everyone's going wild. He's the best guy in the park, by far. All of a sudden, have a scouter comes in. He goes, wow, you're really great. You know what? I want to give you a chance to be, to be an NBA. No, no, I'm good. I'm good like that. Look, look at my fans. Look at all my fans right here. I'm good. Would you ever think that makes sense? He would settle? Now the best, the most world famous player? He would settle for that? That's obviously it's fun, but for us, we have to feel the same way about us. We are the best. We have to be the best. We can be the best. We have so much in us. But we got to attach ourselves to the, the key to unlock it and bring everything out. In the beginning of, of, of Pasha's British, it says, the very strange lusha that God tells, God says when he's trying to make man, what does he say? Nasa Adam, let's make man. What do you mean, let's make man? What do you mean, let's? You are the only one. You are the only ruler. You are the only creator. Who are you talking to? So you know Rashi says, but who are? What, 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 what is that? Who are you speaking to? You are the only one that can create. You are the only one that will create. So who do you want to create with? So the Baal Shem, there was a bomb shot. As you know who God's talking to? He's talking to you. He's talking to man himself. He says, let's make you. I'll do my part. I'll give you a body. I'll give you eyes. I'll give you, I'll give you everything. I'll give you your potential. I'll give you everything you need. I'll give you a Torah to make it happen. But now it's your turn to make it happen. Now it's your turn to rise to the challenge. Now it's your turn to attach yourself to that Torah that I gave you, that best gift that I gave you, in order to become the best you could be. Nasa Adam, me and you together, we will make you. So we have to realize we have such a power in our hands. We have such a potential. We've seen it. We've seen it before. We've seen it after in ourselves. A person has to realize the best part about this, the best part about this whole thing, is that normally when you have such a great goal, when you have such a great, great goal, it usually takes a lot of suffering and pain to get to that goal. For example, like I have a businessman. All of a sudden, he knows he has to invest a million dollars. That's painful. Why does he do it? Because he knows he's going to get five million back. But the process is painful. There's nothing good about giving over a mill. Nothing. You have a guy working out. Right? He does sit up. He wants a six back. Right? He does sit ups over and over. Sits up. Why does he do it? It's painful. It's a painful thing. No, because he wants to look good. He wants to be Mr. Uh, whatever. You know who I'm talking about. I don't know you look like it, but you know who I'm talking about. So it comes out, normally to get a great result, you have to go through something torturous. So it should be for me to connect to the best thing in the world. I have to do something horrible to do it. And I, maybe I'll be willing to. And maybe it's worth it. But you know what Hashem said? You know what? Not only to get the best thing in the world, I want to make you do the best thing in the world. I want to make it so sweet. Nothing better, nothing more enjoyable. It's like me telling my, my son, you want ice cream? You want ice cream? You know what you have to do to get ice cream? Eat candy. If you eat candy, you'll get ice cream. That's what we're doing. Yeah, yes, it's hard in the beginning. No question. It's hard. Like the orange. Right? You know, imagine you're hearing all day long oranges. Eat oranges, the best fruit in the world. Oranges are unbelievable. No fruit like oranges. So a guy's eating oranges. He hates spitting it out, hates it, hates the orange. Then he realizes it. he's eating it with the peel. So yes, you take the peel off, but well, yes, in the beginning you have to realize how to eat the orange. No one taught you. Or they taught you the wrong way. But once you unpeel that orange, once you take a bite into the fruit, there's nothing sweeter. There's nothing better. There's no competition. So Hashem gave us a way to get close to Him in the best way possible, in the most delicious, the sweetest way possible. We just got to taste it. We're the only way to maximize the situation, the only way that we can take this to the next level, what we accomplished this year, is we can't stop. We're not stopping. You can't stop. You can't stop the train, you cannot stop. Once you stop, you lose all the momentum. We know all about, ask any basketball player. Ask any basketball, ask any ball player. What's your most, what's the most important quarter of the four quarters? What are they gonna say? The fourth quarter. Why, it's the same, same amount of time. Each one, is, each one is the same amount of time. What makes the fourth quarter the most? What makes the fourth quarter the most, the most important? Why? Momentum. 
Because I have a first, and then a second, I build a second on the first, I have a third that builds on the second, and now it's the fourth, first, second, third, build. But imagine a guy says, you know what? Blow the whistle after third, we're taking an hour break, let's go home. We'll come back in an hour. No, it can't happen. It's not the same game. You have to start from the beginning. So if you want to continue and to continue and to continue, if you want to continue growing, continue your success, continue and continue and grow to levels that you never knew existed, just like you never knew this level existed. Just like a year ago, I have one boy in my class when he was doing the Ritzubis, and after I said, how could it be? How did you feel? He said, if I would have seen a video of me a year ago, I wouldn't even believe it. Even though I see myself, it looks like me, it talks like me, it acts like me, I still wouldn't believe it. But there are videos, this is not the end of the video. There's levels upon levels upon levels. You think the video's over? You think it's, the show is done? You think 12th grade after it's or whatever it is, it's over, it's done? I, I reached my max? This is just the beginning. As long as you don't stop. And you don't stop, then you have a second quarter, a third quarter, a fourth quarter. Keeps on building and building and building until you won't even recognize. Every year you won't recognize yourself in the next video. And then, wow, the next year I watch the video, I don't recognize myself either. We can't stop. We have to tell ourselves we're not stopping. Ben Asmanim, when you're feeling out of it, when you're feeling tired, you tell yourself, I'm not stopping. Summer, not stopping. You have a sister's wedding, you have a this, you have a that, you have distract, you're in bed, you realize if I miss today, it's gone tomorrow, I'm not stopping. I remember when I first started teaching, one of my, Rabbi Newman used to forward me all the chizuk, the chizuk texts from his Talmudim. You know, the 73rd Siyam and the 86th Siyam and the 103rd Siyam. And I remember getting a text. My Rebbe, I just finished my 52nd Siyam. And that moment was winter vacation. And I get a text from one of my students. And he said, I was in skiing. I went skiing. So Rebbe Newman, I'm reading my phone, reading my text on my phone. I see, oh, forward. Rebbe, I just finished my 52nd Siyam. I'm like, wow, that is unbelievable. 52nd Siyam? 52nd Siyam, does that make sense? At the same time, boom, in my phone, while I'm reading, I get a text from my student. Rebbe, I just, I just, I went skiing on winter vacation. I got a concussion. I'm in bed, bleeding on my back. But I told you that I'm going to learn five minutes a day. And I took my Gemara, and I, on my back, I'm learning my five minutes a day. So I sent that text to Rabbi Newman. And I said, I'm not sure what's sweeter in Hashem's eyes. Your time was 50 seconds see him, or my time was five minutes. But they know what's common in both of them? No one is stopping, no matter what. Yes, we have a billion and trillion excuses in the world. But you know what? That's not going to get you to the level that you could be. A person has to realize that if he doesn't stop, yes, it might be hard. Yes, it might be tough. There was a famous athlete, he gave a, I love this quote. He said, yes, they interviewed him, world famous that guy. He said, yeah, training, training wasn't always easy. So how'd you pull through? How'd you do it? So he said, I told myself, don't quit. Rather, push through now in order for you to be a champion the rest of your life. And that's what we have to take, Lahabda. That's what we have to get. Push through. Don't stop. Imagine none of us in this room stopped. Imagine. We could change the world. If every single guy in this room did not stop, not this year, not next year, not ever, if we just never stopped, there's no reason to stop, we would change Klai Israel. We would change the face of Klai Israel. If you only knew, if you only knew a not stopping man, if you only knew where a guy you, we know, because we see. I see guys five years ago, but we don't see guys 10 years ago where they are now, and he sees the guys that stopped where they are now. We see what it could be. We see the potential. There's no reason every single one of them. Imagine if we only knew what it could be. A better life, a better wife, a better everything. You know, we just started a program. I mean, Newman started a program, Kenyan Masechta for Baal Bat. They said, listen, we have such success with the Bachrim. Let's do a Baal, let's take a, let's take a program, let's make it for the working men. So these guys have been out of Yeshiva for 10 years, not learning. And all of a sudden, Rabbi Newman introduces his sister to the Balabatim, these working guys, successful working guys. And all of a sudden, what? We get texts. Rabbi Newman gets texts from the wives. Thank you. You changed my home for the kids. Thank you. My father's back. My father's great. My father. And look what, look what a year of Torah does. And it's unbelievable. And you know what we think? 
That's one year learning after 10 years out. Imagine he never stopped. Imagine what his home would look like if he never stopped from yeshiva. Imagine what he would be like in his year of Shemaim and his connection and his power and his leadership if he never stopped. Therefore, Bezrat Hashem, Bezrat Hashem together. Let's make that commitment. Let's understand the power of Torah, the perfection of Torah. Let's become more powerful. Let's aim to be great, not just good. And Bezrat Hashem, let's never stop. Let's never stop. And Bezrat Hashem, with never stopping, we'll reach levels and levels that we never knew existed for ourselves. So we'll be...